where Dave is playing with the ignition again. Fucking what? Oi, mate! Ah, uh, stop playing with the ignition. That's how you start and stop the car. It's only lap one. Uh, sorry. Uh, I just, you know, I, I don't even know what half these buttons do, really. Uh, I, I don't even really know what the ignition does. It turns the car on and off, dickhead. Uh, you know, I don't even really, I, I don't even really know how I'm listening to you right now. It's not like I'm wearing a helmet. I, I left that in the pit, mate. <laughs> But hey, it's not like I'm gonna need it anyway, I don't crash on the fucking pro man. Dude, that breaks rule 34 and 67 and 69. You, you've gotta come into the pits this lap, dude, or else you will be thrown out of the race. Alright, hey, hey, did you see that fucking? What an a-hole! Oh, I'm gonna take the next one. Do this lap one! <laughs> Shit! That was Barguana. That was Barguana. Had a huge moment. It's rolled. Oh, it's a Bundy car. No, it's not. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. One of the Bundaberg Red Races has gone over. cinema. Today we're talking about this one, Ford vs Ferrari, and I wanted to talk about this one because it's a classic instance of why I love film. Because it takes already historic and awesome events and then amplifies them for any general going audience. Because in this film, you don't have to love motorsport to love the film. It's really engaging without you even having to be a fan of cars in general. Because unlike other films and documentaries that try to interpret this uh, story, this one not so much focuses on the actual battle of Ford and Ferrari, but is more a stronger character focus on Ken Miles and Carol Shelby and their relationship. And that's what this film more is. And the chemistry is fantastic, I absolutely love it. Um, and the film had me captivated start to finish. It's, um, the film was directed by James Mangold, and I think he does a very fantastic job of keeping that uh, thrilling pace and invigorating action that car racing seems to have. Um, I am a car person myself, a little bit. I wouldn't say I'm a massive on it. I'm big on the local motorsport, not so much Formula One and stuff. The supercars and shit in Australia. Oh, I bet it's rolled. And uh, I didn't even mention who's fucking stars in the film. We got, uh, we got Matt Damon, who's Carrie Shelby. Then we have Christian Bale as Ken Miles, and my god he does he he does a good job. Just He always does a good job. And the film stars John Berthnall as well, who also does a really good job. As like, uh, Ford's in-between man, the guy who kind of talks between Ford and Ferrari. So, the true story was that, uh, Ferrari was willing, winning Le Mans and shit, and Ferrari kind of needed someone to buy them out. And Ford was in the position to do that, and they were like, hey, we'll come and, uh, we'll buy Ferrari, and we'll work something together, have a Ford Ferrari type car in the field. And, uh, Ferrari didn't like parts of the deal and were like, fuck off, man, this is our shit and uh, we're not letting you have kind of the rights to this and that and kind of slapping forward and everything. We can fucking manage shit ourselves. And uh, they went back to Ford and they were like, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Ford. Um, he was like, fuck off. And then Mr. Ford was all like, fucking, okay, fuck them. We're going to do it our way, we're going to fucking sink every dollar we have into making the most fucking awesome American built Ford, and we're going to fucking beat them at their own game. I'm dropping too many F-bombs, I'm sorry. But that was the story, and it took them a couple years, I'm pretty sure, to end 
to beat them. This was back in the 60s. And uh, this, of course, is where the story takes place. Um, I feel like I'm drifting a little bit off course. I apologize. I'm still getting used to the whole kind of talking to a camera thing. It's a little weird for me and being in this empty room, no one watching, but you're watching. Uh, rambling again, sorry. So Ford were determined. They were just pounding at it. They were just sticking every dollar they could into making the ultimate race car. And we got something that looked an awful lot like this. It was fucking sick. I love the thing personally. Um, I'm a bit more of a fan of the newer shit, but that was killer for its time. And they didn't give a fuck if they went broke. They were like, we need someone to build this fucking car for us. And they thought, Carroll Shelby has won Le Mans before. We're going to get him and we're going to get him to fucking build this car for us. So, in the story, Matt Damon is Carroll Shelby. And, and then we have Christian Bale playing Ken Miles, the driver. Um, and as far as they go for adapting a true story, I think it was pretty damn faithful. I did like it how it wasn't so much about... Ford beating Ferrari in this instance, but it was more about the relationship that Carroll Shelby and Ken Miles shared on the journey to making the car to then trying to win at Le Mans. It was more about them. I found it really refreshing and I really liked it. It was very engaging. It's quite a long film. What was the runtime again? Was... Yeah, no, the film's two and a half hours. I just fucking checked. It's, it's, a, it's a long one, but it's um very engaging throughout. I never found myself drifting off or feeling anywhere bored in any sections at all and it always kept me kind of glued to the screen. Now I love film for the specific reason that it amplifies something that's cool into something that's great. I stated that earlier but I'm just going to re-go over that again that it takes something that's really cool. This event and this story that Ford were like we're going to beat them at their own game and we're going to just floor it. We're going to smash Ferrari at their own game and win them on. That's wicked. You know, and it happened, and, F and Ford did it. They actually did it. So, you take that cool story already that someone, a car fan like myself, goes, that was wicked. So you take a story like that, that I already think is really cool, because I'm a car person, and you want to express how cool that is to someone who's just not interested in cars at all. So, it just takes those already epic events, takes them here, stirs them up with some music and some soundtrack, so it really amplifies everything and pumps up the sound and the engines and shit. And then they send it over into the film and it helps just demonstrate what people love in a formulaic, easy digestible form. Am I making any fucking sense? Jesus Christ! And then turns them into something that's digestible for a casual moviegoer. And for me personally, I like racing, so it's really, it makes me really happy to go, hey, I can show someone that's not that interested why I like what I like so much. And there's countless movies I could rack off that do the same thing for me. It was even with uh, the early Marvel Cinematic Universe films that people weren't massive with the first Iron Man or the Incredible Hulk, which I really like as well. I was growing around comic books and the culture and stuff like that, and I absolutely loved it. I was enthralled by it. But in the casual movie guy, I wasn't that interested. They didn't give a shit about comic books or anything like that until Avengers came out, and it started becoming more mainstream. It's why I love films so much, because it takes really cool concepts that I already like and then just boosts them to a scale that everyone can enjoy it. It's very simple. It cuts out all the middle crap of comic books. It just doesn't make sense and then presents that in a light that everyone can understand. Now, I am getting a little off topic because I'm supposed to be talking about Ford versus Ferrari and I'll get right back to that. But I feel like, other than that, I should talk about the cast for a second. Matt Damon, his accent is quite distracting at first. I think I think even Christian Bale's accent at first was like, whoa, whoa, that's fucking a bit different. I, I can't i got to get used to that shit, that's fucking... And you settle into it after a while, but at first it's very jarring, it's like, what the fuck? It sounds nothing like what it usually sounds like, and it's always very easy to forget that Christian Bale is British. I always forget it all the time, because he does such a, a, a good American accent. And this one, it's a little more, I guess, Southern? I, I'm not sure. Um, but after a while, you settle into it and stuff. Um, I don't really have too many cons with the film. It's, a uh, very difficult to criticize a film that's based around true events and although things have kind of in the film formed in the way they did in real life it's very hard to 
also translate that to a story that has beats and resolutions and full arcs for characters when in reality, real life, we don't have arcs or anything like that. The instance I'm trying to talk about is when um, it's John Berthold's character in this film. He's got an interesting introduction, everything's kind of good up until the end. He's kind of just forgotten and dropped off the face of the earth with it a bit. And, that, and that's to some extent, you know, true in real life. But it's, as a film and as a story, it's kind of out of place. You want some sort of resolution or conclusion to that where it's more, oh, he was right about getting them to build a race car for Ford instead of just, he was there and had the idea and then was just kind of backed off with everything towards the end of the film. But other than that, there's not that many cons. It's very, as I said, it's very hard to criticize a film that's based on true events. It's like, you know, you can say, oh, I didn't like that bit so much, but that happened in real life. What do you expect them to do? Even with analyzing and trying to assess a film like this, it's also very hard to grade a film like this because you can't say whether, oh, that was really good or that was really bad for these reasons. It's a true story. They played the events pretty close to what actually happened. So this film's probably going to get a... Uh, I'm going to give Ford vs. Ferrari a 9 out of 10. Uh, it's very engaging throughout. You don't even have to be a fan of motorsport to enjoy the film. Uh, it's very well acted, it's very well shot, the sound is great, and it keeps you captivated the whole time. I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10 legendary status, but I would give it a 9. A 9 sounds very fair and rounded for this film. I think a 9 is a pretty fair assessment, which means, you know, it's, it, it's really great. It's not perfect. Uh, I mean, no film is really perfect. A uh, 10 is more fucking, it's legendary. It's just going to mark time forever. Nine is more that this is just a great film if you ever wanted to watch it or sit down. Um, uh, one more thing I don't think I really mentioned. Uh, there's not as much car stuff as you would think there is of the actual Le Mans that happened in the 60s. But when it is there, it's vamped up and it's, it's fucking great. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing any more stuff, I've got the Joker video here. It'll be this tiny white bar thing that appears here. Here or here, one of them. Um, or if you're not so interested in seeing another review, I also do podcasts here semi-weekly, monthly, very lately we do podcasts whenever we can. Uh, I'm quite booked up for time, but I've always got more stuff on the way. Thank you everybody so much. If you haven't already, subscribe. I've got more shit coming. So, leave a movie or show down below, and I will watch what you know. See you next time.